Legendary activist investor Carl Icahn, who made his career by exposing corporate mismanagements before a U.S. short seller gave him a taste of his own medicine. Icahn has lost about $15 billion since U.S. short seller Hindenburg accused his company of manipulating stocks and misleading shareholders. The U.S. government has arrested Go Wangui, a self-exiled Chinese billionaire, for cheating his online followers of over $1 billion since 2018. He is being charged with 11 counts, including securities fraud, wire fraud, and concealment of money laundering. Founder of Nikola Motors, facing years in prison following his conviction on fraud charges, he promised to revolutionize the auto industry, but was found guilty of misleading investors. This is Sergei Protosenya. Until recently, he lived comfortably in France with an estimated wealth of more than $400 million. He's basically the textbook example of an oligarch. On Tuesday, he was found dead dead in a rented villa in Spain. On the outset, it looks like billionaires have everything. The money, the power, the influence, the private jets, the penthouses. They get to play by their own rules. But in reality, every single billionaire out there is completely miserable. Like they're actually sick in their head. But why? Well, for starters, it has a lot to do with how they made their money. See, anyone can make a few million dollars or even tens of millions of dollars. But a billion? No one gets to a billion without doing some very sketchy things. See, there are only really three ways you can become a billionaire. The first option is the simplest. You got a trick, I mean, sell investors on your vision. So there are three main camps of billionaires in terms of how they actually made the money. The first camp are people who really made their money from investors, uh, whether it's private investors or stock market investors. At the end of the day, their actual money that ended up in their pocket came from investors and not from profits generated directly from customers. And oftentimes they might have companies that are barely even profitable at all, but they do a really good job at getting money from investors. This is Arvid Ali, by the way. He's the former president of Jordan Belfort's companies. Yes, the real wolf of Wall Street. And he's the advisor that celebrities, pro athletes, politicians, and the ultra rich go to when they want to grow their net worth. So he's been very up close and personal with a ton of billionaires. So he knows firsthand what it's actually like behind closed doors. Why is getting people to invest the simplest way to billions? It's because instead of having to convince someone to buy your product, to spend money on you, you're telling them to invest. You're telling them that they're actually going to make money. With this route, you don't ever actually have to build anything with any seriousness. Because think about it, if you sell a product and that product isn't good or doesn't work, you're going to get returns, you're going to get sued, hung from the gallows. But if you pump up some investment and it crashes, I mean, that's just how the market goes. At least I'm in the arena trying stuff. Some will work, some don't. And yeah, you will still walk away with their cash. But you need charm for this route. You gotta get up every day, get on CNBC, put on that fake smile to tell the suckers what the next big thing is gonna be. But what if you don't have the charisma to get billions of dollars in investor money? Well, then you go to option number two. You take advantage of cheap, free labor. The second camp are people who do a really good job at exploiting cheap or free labor. So nowadays they tend to do it by exploiting, you know, very close to free labor in other countries and, and capturing that arbitrage between, you know, how much they charge you as an end consumer and how much it costs them, essentially. And uh, that tends to be, and, and the wider that gap is between how much they can charge you and how much it costs them, that's where they can really make a lot of money. And so you often see this with luxury goods um, and diamonds or any of these sort of uh, categories of products. Those are where the, the founders of the companies uh, tend to make a lot of money, uh, where they really exploit extremely cheap labor or free labor, and they charge the end consumer a, a significant amount of uh, regardless of the product. Wealth at the end of the day mainly comes from labor. Someone had to put the hours into doing the thing to create the thing. Heck, even when you invest in stocks, you make money off of the people in that company doing the labor for you. Which is why if you can get the cost of labor to zero or near zero, you will unlock the infinite money hack. Why do you think dictators like communism? But at the end of the day, this route still requires you to compete in the free markets, even if you have the advantage of free labor. Which brings us to option number three to become a billionaire. Get in bed with the governments. The third camp are people who are aligned to corrupt governments. And so you often see this in, in many third world countries, but you even see this with, with people in China and Russia. But generally speaking, if you are aligned to certain types of governments, you can find ways, especially if you have an oil company, you can find ways to financially benefit quite a bit. And it is a risky situation to get yourself into. And those are the people that tend to end up uh, in jail or, or worse. Yeah, so oftentimes it's very much a family related thing too, where, you know, 
their parents or grandparents or connected to the government leaders. But yeah, at the, at the end of the day, they end up having some sort of private corporation, whether it's construction, oil companies, things where the government essentially gives government contracts to those private entities. Um, that's where you're able to benefit quite a bit from government corruption because you're directly getting money from the government. But to the public, it looks normal like, oh, you know, of course we have to, you know, pay this oil company or we have to pay uh, this construction company. Uh, but uh, who really benefits? It's usually one main guy that uh, gets the majority of that money coming from taxpayer dollars. But um, those are kind of the three main ways that people end up becoming a billionaire. I haven't really seen an exception uh, to those three ways of making that much money. So think about this for a second. Every billionaire either had to commit fraud, use slave labor, or they're in bed with a corrupt government that can kill them or imprison them at any time, along with a ton of other unethical or illegal stuff they had to commit. Every single one of them. And now they're at the top of the world with everyone trying to tear them down. Do you think you would sleep at night in their position? Do you think you'll ever be able to stop looking over your shoulder? Do you think you would ever have any semblance of peace? Think of it as if you robbed a bank. Even if you got away with the crime, you would spend the rest of your life as a fugitive. You will spend the rest of your life knowing that you're hunted, that at any moment you could just lose everything, get arrested, and it would have all been for nothing. So you can never truly enjoy your success or feel comfortable with your money. This is actually the perfect analogy for billionaires. But that is just the first reason why billionaires have a horrible quality of life. And in this video, me and Arvid are going to expose it all. I don't think, you know, if everybody got a chance to, to live their life for a single day, um, I think everybody would realize this is the sort of the worst experience of life anyone can practically have. And I know what you're thinking. Who cares, Jake? They're rich. We shouldn't have sympathy for them. And you're right, we shouldn't. But we should learn from their misery. Stay dangerous, subscribe for more, and let's get into it. The one thing that all these billionaires have in common is that they all use financial advisors. But why? They're super rich and obviously highly educated. Aren't they smart enough to manage their own money? Well, yeah, but rich people know that when it comes to preserving and growing your wealth, it's less about how smart you are and it's more about not making stupid emotional decisions that blow all of your money. Think about it, all the answers to investing are out there already. People have figured it out. You just need someone that is certified in the stuff to guide you so you can focus on what you do best. That is why you need advisors. The problem is finding a professional advisor is tricky. A lot of them act like they have your best interests at heart when really they don't. But luckily that is where Money Pickle comes in, today's paid sponsor. With Money Pickle, you can book a free video call with one of their certified planners or fiduciaries. Just explain your situation to them in a few words and Money Pickle will match you with a trusted advisor for you. On your video call, they'll be able to really understand your situation and give you tailor-made advice specific to you and only you. You can ask them about investing, taxes, IRAs, 401ks, and any other financial concerns you have as a US resident. Think of it as getting to talk to your own personal AI, but you know, it's a real person that is actually certified in this stuff. There are a ton of times to choose from, so you're not going to have trouble finding one that works for your time zone and your schedule. So click the link below and schedule your free call now. Click the link below and book your call now. To imagine what it's like being a billionaire, think about how it would feel if you genuinely believe that at any moment, your life could be over. So the first thing is that for every, pretty much every billionaire around the world, every single day they genuinely feel like they're about to go bankrupt or they're going to go to jail. So in countries like China and Russia, they very commonly do end up in jail and so it's not like a, a sort of a paranoid situation. It's a bit, more than anything else, it's kind of likely outcome for them. And in countries like the US and throughout Western Europe, uh, the bigger concern that they tend to have is whether they're going to have so many lawsuits that kind of buries them or more often the companies that they created, usually it's one main company that allow them to be so wealthy, often times declines either because of market conditions or because the government cracks down on the company. And their paranoia is valid. It's actually very easy to go broke as a billionaire. Even if you look at most S&P 500 companies, they don't actually last more than 20 years. So if your entire lifestyle is centered around this wealth that you accumulated because of one main company or even two main companies, um, very likely that that wealth is going to disappear. And we also see this historically. If you take a look at the majority of the wealthiest individuals throughout all of human history, they end up losing all of their wealth by the time it passes down, even to their grandkids. It's very, very difficult to actually maintain your wealth. And they're very aware of this. So on a daily basis, their actual thought is how am I going to uh, be okay? And it happens a lot more than you think. Take Carl Icahn, for example. Carl Icahn was a legendary investor worth billions of dollars. 
But all it took was one little expose from a short seller called Hindenburg Research, accusing Carl of operating a Ponzi-like scheme, and boom, he lost $10 billion of his net worth in less than a day. Today, he's worth just $5 billion, a staggering downfall from his $25 billion net worth just four months ago. Now you may be saying, but Jake, he's still worth $5 billion. I would be happy if I still have $5 billion after I had $25 billion. And you would think that. But trust me when I say losing money hurts a lot more than knowing that you still have a lot of money left. Whether we're talking about losing your job, but you still have savings, or losing $20 billion, but you still have $5 billion. Most of us think that only regular people experience that gnawing worry about money, but that fear never goes away, no matter how much money you make. Generally speaking, you know, most of us, no matter how much money we have, we tend to feel concerned about our cash flow. We, you know, we have our income, we have our expenses, and we're hoping that nothing really ruins our income so that it doesn't dramatically affect our lifestyle. In fact, it's actually way worse for billionaires. When you're a billionaire, it's actually a much bigger problem because for most people, if they have a job, they would just get another job. But for a billionaire, like how are you going to be able to start from zero again, you know, sort of recreate the lifestyle that you have. And Even the richest of the rich don't ever truly feel financially secure. You and I probably feel way more comfortable about our finances right now than the average billionaire ever will. That's because on top of all these reasons, the only people that ever become billionaires in the first place are naturally the ones that are literally mentally ill. The biggest difference between a billionaire and everybody else is that they're a lot more mentally ill than, than the average person. Think about how actually psycho you have to be in order to never be satisfied with anything that you actually make it to billionaire status. Most of us will stop if we got to a few million. Some of us might only stop if we got to a few hundred million. But a billion? That takes a very specific kind of person. They genuinely are stuck in a mental state feeling like they're dying poor. And that's what drives them to be able to make this much money. It's never the case that I built a company because they enjoyed it and they worked hard. All this is sort of a false narrative. They're very obsessed with money. Uh, every single famous billionaire you can think of, I'm either connected to them directly or I'm one degree away from them more often. And overall, the, I haven't seen like a single exception to this. They're all extremely concerned about their day to day. If you felt that poor every single day, you would keep trying to make more and more money until I Ideally, you don't feel so dying poor, but they don't ever have that physical feeling of feeling okay, uh, like most people will end up having if they reach a certain income level. The fact of the matter is, everyone on this planet doesn't feel like they have enough. Many of us don't. And we're not saying to lower your expectations or something. Just don't take it to a psychotic extreme like these billionaires to where it takes away all your happiness. Everyone watching this right now is technically wealthier than almost every human being that's ever walked the earth, including all the kings and, and queens of the past, because you have access to uh, clean water. You have a wide variety of food that you don't have to typically you know, go out and hunt and gather or, or even farm most of the time. And you have access to electricity. You have access to the Internet. You know, all these luxuries that you have, the, a, a car, a plane, like there, there's just so many luxuries that you have that most of humanity have never experienced, especially even the kings and queens. and, and even then, even though you're objectively way wealthier than anyone you can think of throughout history, most of us can't go about our day just feeling like we're rich. I've never met one person, even the people who are worth you know, a lot more than, than these sort of public billionaires. I've never met one person who feels like they're financially okay. Most of the time, people will feel financially excited when their income or net worth is going up, but it's a very temporary feeling. As soon as you know it stops going up, you go back to your baseline of feeling worried about your finances. And especially if it starts to go down, you, you get even more worried. Uh, outside of, let's say, those those few weeks or months or sometimes a year where it starts to go up dramatically, uh, usually you feel uh, concerned when it comes to your finances, no matter who you are, really. And I promise you, not only do they not feel wealthy, but if anything, what drove them to make that much wealth is that they have a mental illness that you don't have. And if you get that much money, you'll have a different form of a problem. But the main distinction is the type of person you have to become to make that kind of money. Most people people aren't willing to become that kind of person. And I've seen it over and over again. I've, I've never really seen an exception, no matter you know who you think of as a billionaire that has a nice lifestyle. Privately, they're all far worse than any homeless person in Los Angeles that I've seen in terms of their level of mental illness, to be honest. And I know what you're thinking, but Jake, if I had a billion dollars, I would be perfectly happy. I wouldn't fall into the same trap. 
I mean, you can think that. I mean, there's plenty of proof with everyone who's won the lottery. That's like the only really sort of scientific evidence that if you get a large sum of money, you're going to end up, if anything, in debt very quickly. And you're going to be depressed. You're going to be in a lot of legal issues. Your life's going to get pretty messy very quickly. And there's there's some few exceptions to it where if you look at the documentaries, there's some people who like sort of stay secret about the fact that they have the money when they never actually touch it and they keep the same lifestyle. But outside of those rare exceptions, if you just look at it as a science experiment, people People who are middle income and they suddenly get injected with a lot of money, what quickly happens is pretty much what happens to any wealthy individual, which is that your expenses rise with it to a point where it becomes unsustainable and then you can't bring in new income anymore. And now you're in a huge situation because you went from, let's say, making 100 grand a year to now being 50 million in debt. Like, what do you do? So, so it's like a, it's a very tricky situation. And I, I acknowledge, you know, what, what anybody would think, which is like, you know, this, this is not right for us to be empathetic or whatever towards them. I'm not empathetic towards them at all, really. I'm just saying that you objectively are among the wealthiest, you know, 0.00001% of humans that have ever lived, and you still don't feel wealthy. And I promise you, not only do they not feel wealthy, but if anything, what drove them to make that much wealth is that they have a mental illness that you don't have. And if you get that much money, you'll have a different form of a problem. Billionaires are so miserable that Arvid won't even work with them anymore because it's just that miserable being around them. So is there a reason why you stopped working with billionaires? Yeah, I mean, there, it's exactly what I said in, you know, in, in this whole interview. It's like they're, they're by far the most miserable people to deal with. And they're extremely cheap, way cheaper than anyone you could really practically think of. And I would say dealing with them in their environment, it, it takes a toll on you emotionally and mentally. So generally speaking, I, I prefer finding individuals anywhere in the world where I align to them. You know, my message gets across to them, like the way that I speak, what I say, it, it's not meant for most people. It's meant for a small percentage of people who really resonate with it. I prefer this life of trying to help as many people as I can across the world, regardless of their background or situation. And so that's my main focus right now. And here's the thing. Pretty much every material thing you could ever want, you don't need to be a billionaire to afford them. Let's play a game. It's called attempt to spend all of Bill Gates' money. Go ahead and try as hard as you can to spend his billions. Buy 500 Ferraris, 1,000 drones, 20,000 horses, 100,000 acres of farmland. And guess what? That won't even make a dent. You haven't even spent a single billion dollars, let alone come close to wiping out Bill Gates' fortune of $116 billion. Even if you try to make the most absolutely ridiculous purchases, it's basically impossible to spend all that money, much less enjoy those purchases. And even if you could spend all that money, you were only one single person. The difference between you enjoying 100 cars versus 1,000 cars is probably not that big. At some point very early on, you start to get diminishing returns on what you can buy and enjoy. It's pretty easy to run out of stuff to buy. If you get to like a million dollars a year, um, you can pretty much have the perfect lifestyle if you know how to spend it. You could have as ideal of a lifestyle as you could ever dream of in terms of having someone clean your house, having you know your meals made for you, all this stuff. Like it, it's not actually that expensive. You kind of run out at a certain point, like what are you gonna do? Just store Macy's in your house or store Nordstrom in your house? Like there isn't, like what, what else is there to do really? And even with the exotic cars, like they just sit there and you look at them. You know, but like, what are you going to do with it? And even if you live in super wealthy communities, like it's just a suburb, like there isn't that much to do. There isn't anything that glamorous, I would say, that they have access to that most people don't have access to. The only big difference is the fact that all of us have an imagination that they're just sitting there like a king, you know, laughing at the rest of us or something like that. And no matter who you are as a person, at the end of the day, there's nothing more you can do with your day besides waking up eating some food, you know, walking around, sitting down, thinking about things, watching things. Except if you have the billions, now you have much bigger problems to worry about at the same time. So if a few million dollars is all you need to get most of life's luxuries without all the giant problems of being a billionaire, and if luxuries are your only goal, like you don't care about making an impact or whatever, then it would be logical to stop once you have the millions. Another thing about being a billionaire is that you don't actually have a billion dollars sitting in your bank account to use at any time. Nope, most of all of your fortune is usually going to be tied up in things like stocks or equity. I don't think, you know, for the most part, most bil billionaires don't actually have maybe more than, you know, 
maybe 20 or 50 million dollars that they can you know spend each year comfortably sometimes generally speaking i think you know anybody who um uh is listed on on the billionaires list they they don't really have a billion dollars of easily liquid assets um, available. All those massive home and luxury purchases that billionaires are making, even they are taking out loans just like the rest of us. Sometimes they'll they'll make a lavish purchase or something, but usually that's on, on a loan. Even those massive ma mansions that you hear about on those yachts, they'll always take a loan against it. They, they don't just put up cash. They, they might initially put up cash, but they'll always take a loan against it. Being a billionaire might seem like a superpower from the outside, but it's really just an elaborate illusion. They want to present themselves as extremely rich. That's the whole point. Like if you see that an investor is worth $50 billion, then you're going to think he's the best investor in the world. So you're going to want to give your money to him. That's that's kind of at the heart of the situation. So after hearing about all these sketchy billionaires, you might get discouraged. I want to be rich, but I don't want to screw people over. But is it even possible to get rich while being ethical? Well, it actually is. And by the way, don't forget to click the link below for your free video call with one of Money Pickle's certified financial planners or fiduciaries, so you can get personalized advice on your finances, taxes, investments, IRAs, 401ks, and much more. Click the link below to book a call now. So is there, from all your experience, is there an ethical and honest way to make a lot of money? Yeah, so the best thing that I've always seen, and, and these are actually the people who do genuinely make millions of dollars for many, many years to come, is simply a situation where you take your existing job or profession and you turn it into a business. Let's say you're a, a plumber or you mow lawns or you tutor people. It doesn't matter what you really do in the case of tutoring. The nice thing is that you know you can start by tutoring a small number of individuals in a subject that uh, you feel comfortable in. Uh, and then over time, you can learn other subjects that you can tutor more individuals in. And then over time, again, you can expand, you know, the level of subject that you're that you're teaching, even to college entrance exams. And I go through this in, in this sort of free manual that I wrote, where in that tutoring example, like how someone can go from making, let's say, forty thousand dollars a year into making a million dollars. But it's not really about making a million dollars. It's simply about finding a way to add more value to more people versus a situation like Kathy Wood, where she just tricked a lot of people all at once. And it you know, plummeted down as expected. And now, you know, she's in an interesting situation, but I always recommend just turning your job or profession into a business by simply finding a way to service more individuals or even more companies. The last thing I'll say on this is like, imagine you're employed by a company and you provide some sort of services. Imagine it's marketing services or engineering services. Like now, can you see that employer as a customer and now find other companies that you can also service. And then eventually you can have people help you service those companies. So if you want to make more money while living a happy, peaceful life, unlike these billionaires, then focus on actually providing value instead of constantly trying to think of schemes of how to screw over the masses. Are you pretty confident that anyone with a regular job like plumbing or tutoring or whatever can do this and make like at least a million a year? I'm not even recommending making that much money. It's really just changing your mindset to trying to add a lot of value to a lot more people. That's at the heart of it. So it depends on which you know city you live in, which country you're in, and what your starting point is. In my case, like I came from the poorest country, one of the poorest countries in the world, really. But uh, across the board, I've always found that the people who make a lot of money consistently long term in an ethical way, they end up being people who simply turn their professions into a business by just finding a way to add value to more people. And that reflects in how much money that you ultimately make. And one other aspect to that is oftentimes you might be missing a skill that you need to be able to add more value to more people. And so that might be a step one for, for a lot of people watching this is if the profession that you're in uh, can't possibly turn into a business for you, then you can simply learn you know, a skill that you feel excited about learning and then finding a way to turn that profession into into a business. And if people are resonating with what you're, what you're talking about, uh, you got a YouTube channel, 
and they can book a call because of you yeah yeah thanks for thanks jake for <laughs> encouraging me if you guys want to you know i have a, I have a youtube channel it's nothing like that sophisticated it's just me sharing my honest uh private insights that i've had from dealing with all these people all these years and just getting the answers that i've been looking for and sharing that as much as i can with everyone publicly and more importantly making that a way for people to connect with me and, and really have a one-on-one -on -one call and that's that's the thing that i really enjoy doing the most arvid recently put out a free one hour training on his youtube channel that goes really deep deep into how to turn your 9 to 5 job into a super profitable business. I watched it, I was super shocked at how thoroughly he thought through every single little aspect, from how to get clients, to what to say, to how to say it. It's actually one of the best business trainings I've ever seen. And it's free, so click the card on the screen to watch now. This is best for people who have a 9 to 5, or if you're a solopreneur looking to scale while working less. Arvid has been my business advisor for years, and he's the one who taught me how to scale this channel. Can't recommend him enough. And if you're interested in talking to him one-on-one -on -one afterwards, you can book a call with the link in the description of that video.